Hello everyone, so today I just want to show you a very quick tutorial on how I usually organize my goals for the new year. I'm using Notion in this video and I'm going to show you two different alternatives to organize goals in a very simple way that anyone can achieve and using a more visual based approach. So here I'm just creating a new page called 2026 goals and I'm just customizing it a little bit, nothing, you know, nothing overwhelming. In this channel, we like simplicity and minimalism over very complex layouts. For this particular layout, I'm going to pick what I have picked last year, which is a board view. So first of all, I want to make sure I have a text property to ensure I'm dividing my goals by quarters. And this is exactly how we are organizing the goals in this tutorial. We're going to create four main columns. Each one is going to correspond to one quarter of 2026 because personally, I rather prefer quarter goals instead of monthly ones, weekly ones, or even yearly ones. It is much clearer to me how I should be organizing myself and how I should be breaking down different areas of my life into chunks when I'm organizing these in four different categories. So here I'm just ensuring that the preview is exactly what I want it to be. So I'm selecting page content for each one of my cards and I want them to be a larger size. And that once again ensures I have a bird's eye view of all the goals for 2026, but I can also see how I'm breaking down each one inside each card. And you're going to see in a little bit exactly what that looks like. And I'm now creating my groups per quarter. So quarter one, January to March until the end of the year. And once I'm done with that, I will be hiding that empty group on the left side so that we just have each quarter on the page because I want to ensure that this is not exactly a Kanban board. So though the setting is a setting that you would use to set up a Kanban board for productivity, we want to make sure that this works more as a gallery in a way, though it does give you that organization per column method that is exactly what I'm trying to achieve here. So what I'm going to do first is to ensure I'm populating each quarter with my goals. I'm going to speed this up a little bit because it is, um, you know, it is very boring to see me fill this up goal per goal. But basically, I'm creating a system, a color coded system using the icons to ensure that um, I can basically see at a glance if I'm looking at a writing goal, if I'm looking at a goal related to home and family, a financial goal, a business goal, etc. The idea here is to think about my life in main categories and then break those down to ensure that I will be working on each category per quarter. The goals inside each category will be different, but the purpose of this first method is to ensure that I'll be working in each one of these categories every single quarter, though the goals are different. So I'm just populating those categories per quarter first, using that color-coded slash icon-based um, system to ensure that I can see exactly what is going on. And then after that is done, and I copy and paste all of those cards across the four different columns, that's when I will start filling those in with specific goals. Okay, so once that is done, you can see I have writing, social media, home and family, work, finances and personal health for each one of those quarters. So if you want to use this particular method for goal setting, what you're going to do now is you're going to open up one of those categories and you will fill in the blank space, the editing space in your page with the particular goals using the checkbox option. So for my first quarter, I want to finish edits for my first book um, for Truth Teller and I want to finish drafting another manuscript I'm currently working on. As you can see, when you show the contents of each page in the card view in your board, you will see the checkboxes in that view. And that's exactly what I love so much about this board view when I want to organize goals. Let's now look at your second alternative. We're going to use roughly the same type of view, but we're going to arrange our cards in a different way. But the first thing we're going to do is look back at the quarter per column view. So we're going to stick with the quarter view, but instead of creating large categories for each one of those columns, we're just going to populate those columns with the goals in themselves. So remember that I have 
added added truth teller to my writing goal for Q1. Now I'm just going to edit that out and add it in back again as a single goal. What this view has that is way more flexible than the other one, the first alternative I showed you guys, is that when you are just populating the board with the goals instead of broad categories, you are ensuring that you're allowing maximum flexibility throughout the year to reorganize your board as you see fit. So for instance, right now I am adding a new goal. This is a social media goal for Q1, which is, you know, surpass 2K followers on Instagram for my author account. But in my experience, what happens a lot is that perhaps I will not be able to accomplish this in Q1. And I still want to drag that to a different column, irrespective of that being part of a broader category of goals. So with this approach, you are able to click and drag things around without having to manually write and delete the goals inside each one of those bigger cards. Here, I'm also adding the status property. And I want to ensure that these are visible because when I look at those goals without the check mark, I want to make sure that I know exactly what has started, what goals are still in progress and which ones are complete. This is pretty much irrelevant in the first alternative you saw here because you had the checkboxes in themselves to show you what was the progress of that goal looking like. But here I think it's pretty important to enable the status property in your table view. Also, because you are not working with broader categories, this is a really nice time for you to find some sort of icon or color based system for you to, you know, see at a glance which type of goal you are editing or you're dragging around. So for instance, for social media, I have that little red camera. For health, I have the blue heart. And for writing related goals, I have the red pen. And once again, when I look at everything at a glance, I can see, oh, okay, this is a writing goal. This is a health goal. This is a social media goal and so on. Now you may be looking at this and thinking, this is so obvious. Why are we watching a tutorial on this? I think that in my experience, when I'm dealing with my clients, you know, I'm a productivity coach as well. I'm not only making these videos, I'm also trying to help people in one-on-one -on -one sessions. And one of the things that people ask me the most is that they don't know how to start using Notion when they come from, you know, a blank page perspective, because there are so many features, so many different options, and they are not sure how to organize very simple things. And for me, yearly goals, even if they're broken down into months or quarters, it's a pretty simple thing to organize. I usually call it the bare bones of project management um, and planning for a project. And this is a very simple way to organize your goals for an entire year without having to go too much in depth and look at all of the features that Notion provides you with. You can simply create these very chunky cards um, in this board view. But even with the board view, it's interesting how you can customize it in a way that makes sense for your sort of workflow. If you're someone who has to rearrange things a lot because you have a very reactive lifestyle. So even if you want to accomplish that in Q1, you want to make sure you have the mental space and that your workspace corresponds to that mental space you want to, to provide. You want to have the space and the flexibility to just drag things around, postpone things, eliminate some goals without having to completely, you know, rearrange the entire board and making some of those pieces fall off. This alternative number two is a really good way for you to set up your goals in, I would say, 10 to 15 minutes one of the reasons why I wanted to make a tutorial in real time like this one, so though the tutorial in itself was pre-recorded and I'm, you know, this voiceover is being added on top of it, everything you're seeing here, besides when I say I'm speeding things up, this is in real time. So it shows you that it is possible to organize something for the entire year in a very short amount of time. You don't have to download or purchase very complex templates in Notion. Some people might benefit from that. And perhaps you are someone who really needs a very complex database to make things make sense to you. But perhaps um, you aren't. Perhaps you just need something more bare bones like this system here. 
As you can see, the positive thing about this alternative number two is that you can open each one of those individual goals and you can use the card view to basically add in the check marks, but in a way that you're breaking down each goal into smaller tasks, which as you know, is one of the basic principles of productivity and task management and time management, breaking down something that seems very daunting into smaller and smaller chunks um, that ensure your task is very reasonably planned and very easy to accomplish. I'm showing you here that because you're in Notion, you can realign and you can reorganize things according to your needs. So if you want to look at this quarter view, but you want to ensure that you're seeing something like, oh, I want to see all the goals that are still in progress, or I want to see all the goals that are not started yet, or I want to see all the goals that are complete. You can create conditional colors for this, for instance, to really ensure that when you're looking at your goals at a glance, everything is very, very obvious to you. You can just also use the filter system to hide the cards that don't make sense to you. Or you can even or organize these columns by status instead of the quarter of the year that you want to identify. So here I'm creating some conditional rules so you can see exactly what I mean by this. As you can see, if I am creating a conditional color, that means that the name contains drafts. It will automatically color in red all of my goals and tasks that have the draft word on them, which for me as a writer, this is very important because I really need to know when I will be drafting something and when I will be done with the drafting. So all in all, I'm just playing with a few more properties just to try to give you a, an idea of how much you can customize. But once again, the purpose of this tutorial is just to give you a very, very simple, like the most bare bones approach possible to goal setting in 2026. I think sometimes simpler is better. We try to, to make things too complex to the point where we abandon them because the maintenance um, is way too much and our lives are very busy. And I think this is a really powerful approach for you to try in 2026. I hope this was helpful. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. Writing, just like learning, really comes down to consistency and small wins, even if you only have a few minutes in your busy day. That's exactly why I love using Brilliant, who are kindly sponsoring today's video. Brilliant helps you become a better thinker and problem solver with thousands of visual, interactive lessons across math, science, programming, and data analysis. What makes it special is that you're not just watching videos, you're actually solving problems and playing with concepts which research shows is way more effective than passive learning. For instance, Brilliant's data courses are a perfect way to start or continue learning data analysis, covering everything from basics like data visualizations to advanced topics like algorithms and regression models. Using real-world data from Airbnb, Spotify, Starbucks and much more, you'll learn to see trends, parse and visualize massive data sets and make better informed decisions. For me, it is the perfect balance. I can jump into a quick lesson when I have a spare 10 minutes, but it also builds into a powerful daily habit that keeps me making real progress over time. And the best part is that it never feels like a chore. The lessons are super interactive and very fun. You'll catch yourself spending time on them the way you'd scroll through social media, only now you're building real skills that actually stick. So if you want to start building problem-solving skills and learn in a way that actually lasts, head to brilliant.org slash Mariana or scan the QR code on screen or click the link in the description box to get 20% off an annual premium subscription, which gives you unlimited daily access to everything on Brilliant.